Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to 1908. We've got the Red Sox, the Highlanders, and they're um, right here in the middle of the American League. I've been talking about this a lot, but uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more because uh, there's basically nothing separating any of the eight teams in the American League so far. So uh, it's uh, pretty interesting, kind of strange how the replay worked out like this, and uh, that's just the way that it is sometimes. And it's going to be Doc Gessler here for the uh, Red Sox. But uh, before I begin, we probably want to uh, go ahead and uh, change uh, the uh, dice cam around a little bit. There we go. Hopefully this will make it, let's see here, it should make it maybe a little bit easier to see. Hard to say because we got the uh, window here right in front of me, and uh, I like doing that because I like watching the birds come over to our bird feeder while I uh, work on this computer. So we deal with this the way that we have to. Doc Gessler rolls a 16 for a 26. That's a ground ball over to Niles at second base. Throws the first for the out. There's one away, and it's Bob Lundglaub now. Rolls a 46 for a 29. That's a comeback over to Bill Hogg, who makes the play and throws the first for the out. Two away, and it's Amy McConnell. He rolls a four, 54 for a 45. Little E roll is going to be an 11. That's within the range, and uh, that will change that to an error on Hogg, as that was a, a ground ball hit back to him. And that will bring up uh, Heine Wagner. So uh, McConnell does have some speed. We will run with him. And uh, the rolls a 36 for a 33. It's going to be a line drive over to the third baseman. Conroy has it for the out. We go to the bottom of the first. It's Charlie Hemphill. And Charlie rolls a 42 for a 14. It's going to be a walk. And I expect we'll have quite a few walks here given up by uh, Burchell. He's given up his 12th walk of the season so far. And here is Wee Willie Keeler. Keeler rolls a 52 for a 27. That's going to be a ground ball over to the third baseman, Lord. He has to throw to first for it. And Hempel moves up to second. Jake Stahl now. Stahl rolls a 51 for a 10. And that's going to be a ground ball again over to third base. It's going to be Lord again throwing to first for the out. Two away. Neil Ball is up there, and he rolls a 36 for a 33. The little E roll ends up being a 22. That's within the range. That's going to be an error there on the pitcher. So that's hit back to Burchell, who boots it. Ball ends up on at first base, and it's a 1-0 game in favor of the Highlanders, just like that. Harry Niles now up there rolls a 21 for a 30. It'll be a fly ball over to Sullivan, the center fielder, for the third out. And we go to the top of the second. No hits, but it's a 1-0 game for uh, New York. And Sullivan rolls a 52 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to the third baseman, Conroy. Throws the first for the out, one away. Gabby Kravath now. Gabby rolls a 61 for a 40, changed to 36. It's going to be a ball. And uh, next rolls a 64 for a 22. That's changed to an 18. That's going to be easily an error on the shortstop on ball. And uh, both teams, uh, actually the Highlanders now have committed two errors. Red Sox only one. And here comes Harry Lord. And uh, he rolls a 15 for an 11. That's going to be a single that sends Kravath to third. Lord then uh, with uh, Krigger up there uh, decides to steal second and is able to do so successfully. We've got runners on second and third. Now I will point out here that there's no balls and no strikes because um, this is a little bit odd. There should be one strike on the batter. It looks like that might be a little glitch with MP3. I don't know if Cyrus watches any of my random uh, videos or not, but if you're here, Cyrus, just so you know, there should be one strike on him, not zero. Lou Krigger with runners on at second and third, and uh, it's too early, I think, to bring the infield in. Question is, should we bunt or should we swing away? And uh, we'll take a quick look here and see. I'm not even sure if there's much to look at, though. I think, I, uh, I think we will bunt. Actually, let's see what happens. And the roll is a 25 for a nine. That ends up being a bunt that's uh, beaten out for a base hit. Krigger is um, on at first, and that scores the run. It's a 1-1 ball game. And here is Fred Burchell. And now you know that you really want to bunt. We will put the safety squeeze on. And uh, Burchell rolls a 63 for a 13. And that's going to be a uh, foul strike. Oh, and won the count now on Burchell. And uh, next is a 33 for a 7. And uh, so that would have been a base hit. It ends up being a bunt over to the right side. Hal Chase has and flips over to Niles for the out of first. And uh, Krieger moves up to second. Doc Gessler now 1-1 the score. Two outs, top of the second. And uh, Gessler rolls a 22 for a 7. He gets the base hit, scores both runners, and ends up on second base. It's a 3 to 1 game now in favor of the Red Sox. And here's Bob Unglaub. Unglaub rolls a 56 for a 34. And that's going to be a uh, pop up over to the second baseman, Niles, for the third out. Go to the bottom of the second, and it's Hal Chase up there. Hal Chase rolls an 11 for a 0. And uh, rolls a 35 for a 6, and he'll get a double there to right center field, and that'll bring up Walter Blair. So a uh, little bit of a chance for the uh, Highlanders to do something, and they'll bunt Chase over to third. The rolls a 56 for a 34. I think that's what they want to see, but then it's uh, 12 for the little E roll. That's going to be an error on Burchell, two errors on both teams, and uh, that allows Chase to score. Blair ends up on at second base, and that brings up Wood Conroy. It's time to bunt again. 
Conroy rolls a 34 for a 44. And here's the little E roll. It's a 63 this time, which is out of the range. And so well, that ends up being a little bunt over to the left side. Lord has it and throws over to McConnell, covering a first. Two, uh, one away now, I'm sorry. And here's Bill Hogg. And I think we're going to have Hogg swing away. I don't like the prospect of bunting with a runner, a slow runner on a third. Hogg rolls a 24 for a 13. He'll go sit down. Two away. And here's Charlie Hemphill. Two outs. And he rolls a 26 for a 27. That's going to be a ground ball over to third base. Lord has it and throws two first for the out. We go up to the top of the third inning. It's going to be Amby McConnell, of course. McConnell up there for the Red Sox rolls a 12 for a 25. And uh, here's the little E roll. It's a 45 out of the range. And it'll be a ground ball over to Niles at second. He makes the play and throws it to first for the out. One away. Heine Wagner now hitting 309, 328 on base percentage, hitting quite well. Rolls a 43 for a 29. It's a comeback over to Bill Hogg, who throws the first for the out two away. And now it's Denny Sullivan. Sullivan hitting 240. That's um, also probably a little bit above average. He rolls a 65 for a 35. Literally rolls a 63 out of the range. It's going to be a pop-up over to chase the first baseman for the out. And we go to the bottom of the third. Three to two still Red Sox. And here's Wee Willie Keeler for uh, New York. He rolls a 52 for a 27. Ground ball again to Lord. He makes the play and throws to first for the out. One away. Jake Stahl now rolls a 24 for a 13. Second strikeout picked up by Fred Burchell against only one walk despite the W. Neil Ball now rolls a 33 for an 8, and that'll be a clean single to left center field. Only the second uh, hit of the game for the Highlanders, and that brings up Harry Niles with two away. He rolls a 22 for an 8, and that's going to be another single, but uh, the uh, runner is thrown out at third base. Good uh, throw there by Sullivan, who throws over to Lord for the tag out, and we go to the top of the fourth. Red Sox still up 3-2, three to two. three hits for each team, two errors for each team, and Gabby Kravath up there rolls a 42 for a 14, and there's a walk. First one issued by Bill Hogg. So you can see two W's on the mound. Still not that many walks. And here's Harry Lord. Lord rolls a 42 for a 22, and he's hit by the pitch. And Kravitz goes over to second base. It'll bring up Lou Krigger in an obvious bunting situation. He rolls a 64 for a 27 and then strikes out, trying to bunt. There's one away. Fred Verschel also going to try to bunt. Rolls a 41 for a 27. Same thing happens. Strikes out, and there's two away. Two strikeouts now for Hogg against the one uh, base on balls. Here's Doc Gessler, and he rolls a 54 for a 45. That's a fly ball over to right field. Keeler has that one for the out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Hal Chase, the leadoff uh, hitter here. He rolls a 66 for a zero. And his next roll, 23 for a six. It's going to be a double to right center, and that'll bring up Walter Blair now with the runner on his second potential tying run. Blair is going to bunt, and he rolls a 63 for a 30. That's a good bunt over again to the left side. Lord has it and throws over to first this time for the out. One away, and as Wood Conroy and the infield comes in with the runner on a third. Chase, of course, is fast. The roll is a 64 for a 27, and that's what uh, Burchell wanted to get. Ground ball over to Lord, who uh, looks hate Chase back to the bag. Throws the first for the out. I've got to imagine that Chase, as soon as he saw that ball coming to him, retreated straight back to the bag right behind him. Two away, and it's Bill Hogg up there now, and he rolls a 61 for a 13 and strikes out. And we go to the top of the fifth inning, and uh, this will be Bob Unglaub here, 3-2, to two, Red Sox with the lead. Unglaub rolls a 22 for a 7. That's going to be a single there to right field, and that'll bring up um, Amby McConnell. Unglaub up over on uh, first base, and we do want to look at him. We do want to look at him because uh, sometimes you will end up with an 11 for a guy who's slow, but uh, not in Unglaub's case. McConnell rolls a 16 for a 28. That's going to be a ground ball over to Ball. Ball flips over to Niles for one on to chase at first for the double play, and there's two away just like that. Here's Heine Wagner. He rolls a 46 for a 29. That's going to be a comebacker over to Hogg, and he throws to first for the out. We go to the bottom of the fifth just like that, and it's Charlie Hemphill. Charlie rolls a 63 for a 31. Fly ball over to Sullivan in center field. He's got it for the first out. One away, and it's Wee Willie Keeler. He rolls a 21 for a 30. It's a fly ball over to Kravath and left. Two out, and uh, here's Jake Stahl. He rolls a 52 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to Lord, a third, and he makes the play and throws to first for the out. We go to the top of the sixth just like that. Both pitchers pitching pretty well. Denny Sullivan now rolls a 32 for 26 for the Red Sox. It's a ground ball to uh, Niles, who makes the play at second, throws to first for the out, one away. Gabby Kravath is up now, and he rolls a 65 for a 35. There's a little he rolls a 63, which is out of the range. It's going to be a pop-up over the third baseman, Conroy, who has that for the second out. Harry Lord now up. Harry Lord rolls a 13 for a 39. Change at 36. It's going to be a ball. 39 would have been a walk, by the way. Next roll is a 51 for an 8, and there's a single to left center field, and so that does put another runner on for the Red Sox, top of the 6 with the one-run lead. And it's Lou Krigger up there. Krigger rolls a 62 for a 12, and that's going to be another walk, and that's where the W really hurts you in this game. 
two on now with uh, the pitcher, Burchell, up. Um, two outs, top of the six. Burchell rolls a 63 for a 13, and we'll go down swinging, and we go to the bottom of the six. Here is Neil Ball. Ball rolls a 64 for a 13 and strikes out. Four strikeouts for Fred Burchell, not too bad. Harry Niles, the next hitter, rolls a 53 for a 20. That's going to be a uh, ground ball over to uh, McConnell, the second baseman, who ends up booting that one, allowing Niles to reach base. Third air of the game on the Red Sox, and that'll bring up Hal Chase. The Highlanders do have a good chance here. Let's see what Hal can do. Chase rolls a 45 for a 14 and will walk. Now there's runners on a first and second with only one out, and the question is, do we swing away with Walter Blair or do we uh, bunt with him? I vote bunt, so let's try to bunt and see what happens. Hal Chase, of course, is always uh, suspected of gambling ties, but uh, playing fairly well today. Some would say he was one of the greatest players of all time. He just never applied himself. I'm not so sure about that. Um, Blair's role is a 55 for an 8, which normally would have been a base hit. That ends up being a bunt back to Burchell, who throws over to McConnell, covering a first for the out. Let me know down below what you think about that one. Maybe I should have swung away with him, huh? Wood Conner up now with uh, two outs, runners on a second and third, and he rolls a 32 for a 26. It's going to be a ground ball over to the second baseman, McConnell, who throws the first for the out. We go to the top of the seventh in a tight ball game, and here's Doc Gessler. So the Highlanders um, ruin a chance to potentially tie it. Gessler up there rolls a 41 for a 28. That's a ground ball over the ball at short. He throws the first for the out, one away. Bob Lindglaub now rolls a 56 for a 34. Little E rolls a 26 just out of the range. That's going to be a little pop-up over to the uh, shortstop. Uh, it'll be a ball who has that one for the second out. And here's Amby McConnell. McConnell rolls a 43 for a 29. That's a comeback or over to Hogg who throws the first for the out. And we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, fast-paced game. Bill Hogg up there again rolls a 51 for a 13, and he'll strike out. That's the fifth strikeout for Burchell so far, one away. Here's Charlie Hemphill, who rolls a 54 for a 45. That's a fly ball over to right field, and it's Gessler who has that one for the out, and there's two away. Wee Willie Keeler now rolls a 23 for a 32. It's a fly ball again over to Gessler and right, and we go to the top of the eighth inning. Heine Wagner will leave this off. He rolls a 31 for a 9. That's a pop-up over to a third base. Conroy has that one for the first out, and it's Denny Sullivan. Sullivan rolls a 54 for a 45. It's going to be a fly ball over to right field. Gessler has that one. I'm sorry. Keeler has that one for the second out. Here is Gabby Kravis. He rolls a 62 for a 12. That's a uh, little ground ball over to uh, Chase, the first baseman, who does it to the bag himself. When we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, all of the fireworks came early today. Jake Stahl, leading it off for New York, rolls a 26 for a 29. It's a comebacker to Burchell, who throws the first for the out. There's one away. Neil Ball now. He rolls a 46 for a 29. Another ground ball back to Burchell. Throws the first for the out. There's two gone. Here is Harry Niles, and he rolls an 11 for a zero. Here we go. And a 62 for a two. And that's going to be a triple to left center field for Niles. And uh, that might end up being a really big, big uh, play. Let's see if the uh, Highlanders can get him home. Fifth hit of the game for New York. Brings up Hal Chase with a runner on a third base. No way you can bun. No way you can do much of anything. So we'll just roll. And it's a 63 for a 31. Fly ball over to Sullivan in center field. And Chase can't get it done. We go to the top of the ninth. Harry Lord here to lead things off. Top of the ninth inning. He rolls a 62 for a 12. That's a ground ball down to Chase, who uh, does it himself. Steps on the bag for the out. One away. Lou Krigger now. Rolls a 65 for a 35. And the little E rolls a 24, just missing being in the range. That's going to be a pop-up over to the third baseman, Conroy, for the second out. And here is Fred Burchell, who's pitched very, very well today. He rolls a 54 for a 45. That's a little fly ball over to right field. Keeler has that one for the out. And uh, it's do-or-die time here in the bottom of the ninth inning for the Highlanders. Walter Blair will lead this off. He rolls a 35 for a 22, change to 19. That's going to be an air. He reaches base now in an air charged on Lord. And uh, this might be the start of something big. So there's an air here to lead things off in the uh, bottom of the ninth inning for the Highlanders down by just a run. And um, let's see what happens from here. That'll bring up Wood Conroy. And uh, now the question is, do we keep Blair in the game or do we pinch run for him? I think we want to uh, put in a pinch runner. Let's see who we have on the bench. We have Kid Elberfeld, who's fast. And uh, he's probably who we want. He only has the 10, though, but I think we will put him in as a pinch runner. And uh, we'll probably bun with Conroy. I think that's what the plan is. So runner on at first base, nobody out here. Bottom of the ninth inning, New York down by a run. Big rivalry game, and uh, it's going to be a bunt by Conroy. And he rolls a 54-4-45. There is a little E. A little E would help you even more. 
but uh, the rule's a 31 out of the range. That means that's a bunt over to the uh, third baseman, and it's going to be Lord who has this one and has to go to first with a kid Elberfeld able to make uh, second base, and uh, that means that now there is a runner on in scoring position with one out, and it's a fast runner at that. Um, and uh, that will bring up the pitcher's spot. And, of course, we're not going to let Bill Hogg hit for himself. Let's see who we have on the bench. So we could do uh, Klein out. We could do Moritari, or we could do Sweeney. We could also look at one of the pitchers. The thing I'm looking for, as always, is that on-base and slugging percentage to see if there's anybody who's good. Al Orth, maybe he might uh, actually, you know what, Al Orth looks like he's going to be a better choice than anybody else on the bench, certainly than any of the position players. These guys are bad. So Al Orth it is. Al Orth is going to be the pinch hitter with the runner on in scoring position, one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. We will leave Fred Burchell in, and that's always one of those questions that you ask, which is do you take the pitcher out or do you leave the pitcher in in a situation like this? It's 1908, so I'm going to leave the pitcher in. Um, if this were 1949, I might take the pitcher out. So it depends upon what season you're talking about. That's the way that I'm going to play it. Al Orth up there is the pinch hitter already announced, and there he stands. And the roll is a 63 for a 32. That's going to be a fly ball over to right field. Uh, Gessler's got that one for the out. Now Gessler's arm is not great, which means that that fly ball now is deep enough to move Elberfeld over to third base, uh, but with two outs. And so uh, now there's a runner on at third base for the Highlanders with two outs. Charlie Hemphill comes up as the hitter. Hemphill uh, 0 for 3 today, had a walk, and uh, hitting 236 this season probably is going to uh, no longer be in the leadoff position once we get to Sunday and I change the lineups. Hemphill Rolls a 23 for a 32, and that's going to be another fly ball over to Gessler. Gessler has that one over in right field for the out, and that's going to do it. And so, despite all of the fireworks at the very end of this game, it turns out that the uh, Red Sox are able to hold on uh, to win this one, and they beat the Highlanders 3-2, uh, to two, and that'll put the Red Sox at 9-7, and seven, and they are right up there with St. Louis for the uh, lead here in the American League and the Highlanders are going to slip down a little bit more. But sure, hope you enjoyed this one, because I did, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.